another day another ios video what is going on guys welcome back to another ios development video today we're going to be actually working in objective c uh, generally on this channel we've been doing swift related videos but i've got a lot of feedback that people want to see how to do uh, a similar thing in objective c so we're going to be learning how to create a table view both programmatically and via the storyboard in objective c so a quick preface, a lot of the big tech companies, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, uh, we all use and they all use uh, Objective-C because some code bases and projects are old and Swift is newer of a language. So you can imagine that there's a lot of legacy code around. So having a good understanding, uh, especially if you want to join one of these big tech companies is a really good idea. So that said, hope you all are doing well. Make sure you absolutely destroy that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. If you're new, welcome. Hit that subscribe button while you're at it. Get excited, get Xcode ready. Let's jump right in. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so let's get started by creating a new project. We'll stick with a single view application template. Make sure the language here is on Objective C. And let's call this project my table view. Let's stick it on our desktop and let's jump right in. So uh, like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we'll take a look at how to create the table view via the storyboard and also entirely programmatically. So we're going to be working uh, in the view controller that you see here, the header and the implementation file. So I like to highlight them and create a group to put them in uh, just to organize it a bit a little bit better. And let's call this controller. And let's start first with the example using the storyboard. So for the storyboard in the header here, we need to create an outlet. So we're going to create a property that is strong and non-atomic and it'll be an IB outlet and let's actually run the project in the simulator so the autocomplete starts working so select the simulator hit command R to build and run and you'll see an empty app uh, load onto your simulator and let's uncomment this and there it goes IB outlet and it's gonna be a UI table view and we want it to be, let's see, let's call it my table view. And now we can jump into our main dot storyboard. And in here, we want to bring a table view uh, into our controller. So let's come up here and search for a table view. Drop it on in like so. Let's right click on this and we'll see our newly created my table view outlet. Let's drag it to the table and let's select the table, come down here and add constraints to be zero from the top, left, right, and bottom, like so. Uh, the additional thing we need to do in here is select the table uh, over here, which is my table view. And on the right hand side here, you'll see there's a field called prototype cells. We want to increment this, which will add a cell. And a prototype cell is essentially a template cell that the table view shows over and over again, and we can configure each of them. So the notion of the table is that it repeats a cell to, to basically keep things efficient. You can imagine if a table had a million cells, uh, it's not going to be efficient if we have a million things in memory at once. Uh, so anyways, once we increment that, we can open this up and there's a cell in here. And the thing we want to do with the cell is give this, a, give this an identifier. So you can call it whatever, I'll just call it cell. So now that the storyboard is set up, we can go back to our implementation file, so the .m, and um, what we need to do 
rather, let's go back to the dot h. We still need to do one thing in here. And that is we want to conform to the table view data source and delegate protocols. So up here uh, in front of this inheritance, we're going to use these angle brackets and we're going to say UI table view delegate and UI table view data source. And now that we have said this class conforms to these two protocols, we can go to the implementation file and you'll see an error pops up because we've said that this class conforms, but we don't have the required functions. So we hit the error and we can hit fix and you'll see it actually brings in a bunch of stuff. So let's say command Z to undo this. Um, you actually only need two uh, you actually only need two functions that are minimum minimally required and that is number of rows so table view number of rows and it expects a number to be returned so let's return three and cell for row and this basically returns a cell at a given uh, index path in the cell or in the table so in here, we're going to say UI table view cell, cell equals table view, DQ cell with a reusable identifier. And it'll be the cell identifier that we added in the storyboard. And let's not forget to put a semicolon here. Let's say cell dot text label dot text equals hello world. And finally, let's return the cell. And before we run the app, what we need to do in view did load is we need to tell the table who its data source and delegate class is. So we're going to say self dot my table view dot data source is self and same thing for the delegate. So we're not going to focus on the delegate for the purposes of this video, but there is another function uh, that you can implement called did select row at index path and as the name of this function implies when you select a row uh, this function gets called if you want to do something take an action show a screen with that uh, cell interaction so now we can hit command r to build and run and hopefully we didn't break anything and cool look at that we've got uh, a table with three cells because we specified three here and we're showing hello world in each of the labels and that's how you do it with the storyboard. So let's go to the storyboard and let's get rid of this. So let's get rid of that table. Let's go back to the header and let's get rid of this. And we can also get rid of this actually because we're going to move that conformance of the protocols. So let's go to the .m implementation file and let's set this table view up with a uh, with just code, so without a storyboard. So to do that, we still need to declare a property, but we can declare it in the .m, which will make it a private property. It'll still be strong and non-atomic. So the strong and non-atomic business refers to uh, the memory uh, retention of this property. I won't get too much into the weeds of that since it's a little out of scope for this video. But what you need to understand is that we need to create a property for our table view, like so. Uh, we can ignore these errors for a minute. Let's actually use the same property name up here. Notice that there's no IB outlet in here. Uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to bring in the conformance of the protocols into the implementation file. So we're going to say in here, UI table view delegate. UI table view data source and you'll notice that these errors will go away and let's see what else do we need to do so when we use a storyboard our table view is created on the storyboard but when we're creating this in code we need to actually allocate a set of frame and initialize the table view in code so the way we do that is we say self dot the table view variable equals a UI table view alloc to allocate some memory for it and we're going to init with a frame and uh, a frame is nothing more than just uh, the kind of rectangle that holds the table view on the screen so it's a core graphic 
uh, rectangle. So we're going to say C is rect make. X is 0. Y is 0. Width will be self dot view dot frame dot size dot width. And we'll be lazy and copy and paste this for the height. Except the difference is this will be size dot height. And then uh, the table also needs a style. So this will be UI table view style plane. So this basically assigns a, uh, the variable to a table view. Now below here we have said that the table views delegate and data sources self. And it looks like we've got an error here. Maybe not. Let's say command B. Make sure everything is still compiling. Um, before we can actually use this table view, we need to add it to the screen. And the way we can do that is we can say self.view add subview uh, the, var the variable, so the table view. So you can do that here or before you assign the delegate and data source. Generally, I like to do it after. It's just more readable. Uh, the only important thing is you need to make sure you add it to the screen after you've assigned the variable for obvious reasons. Uh, because it needs to know what it is before it can try to add it. And that said, I think that's all we need to do to get this table view running with only code. So hit Command R. And it looks like we crashed. So let's find out why we crashed. So let's go back. So let's open this console up. And I like leaving these parts in the video where I screw things up myself because I think it's helpful to see uh, what actually ends up happening. So data source returns a nil self for row at index path. So let's see what that means. So that basically means that we are trying to create a cell with this cell identifier, but the table view doesn't know what it is. And the reason is, is we haven't set the identifier anywhere. So this is going to be nil initially. So when you create things via code, there's a couple ways to do it. The way that I like to do it is you can come in here and say, if uh, cell is nil, we're going to say cell equals a UI table view cell allocated. And we want to init with a style and a reuse identifier. So style will be UI table view cell style default. And the identifier will be the same identifier up here. And basically what's going on here is the first time we try to show a cell, it doesn't exist. So we say, okay, if it's nil, let's create the cell. The second cell that the table tries to show, because it knows the last one had the ID of cell, it can reuse that cell. And it'll reuse it. Uh, it allows us to reset like the values of it, like the text and such. We're just using hello world. But that's the idea here. So now when we run it, we won't crash because the first time uh, we created the cell and the subsequent times we reused the cell. So as you can see here, we now have our table view with the same three cells, uh, looks identical to the storyboard version of it, but we only have code in this implementation.m file and we're doing everything programmatically from creation, the framing, the delegate, the data source, and the cell creation. So that said, that's a pretty quick overview of how to create a table view in Objective-C, both programmatically and via a storyboard. So thanks for watching. If you haven't done so already, make sure you absolutely smash that like button down below. Helps out with the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe if you're new. I do Swift videos, Objective-C videos, other tech videos along the way. Uh, leave a comment down below if you have a question or feedback or just want to say hi or have a suggestion. I try to reply to every comment. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.